cracking peoples welcome back to the vlog it's week 53 so the last episode last vlog wrapped up a year of me videotaping didn't miss a single week there are a couple episodes missing because youtube took them down i guess for like copyright infringement or some shit i don't know i put drake in the credits of a song so they took it down so i just want to say i got a lot of feedback from the last video i put out me talking about you know the breakup i just went through and I had a feeling that that one would resonate with a lot of people because I'm sure a lot of people have been in that position or felt the same way I, I had felt at the time I was making that video. So I appreciate the comments, any of the emails, any of the DMs or whatever text messages that I got following that. So just know that I'm here if any of you guys ever need to talk or whatever. I am very open-minded. I'm a good listener, all that kind of shit. So definitely feel free to reach out to me if you feel that way. It's Monday morning. I'm at the gym. I just finished up a good workout. I took the weekend off from vlogging just because, you know, just want to clear my head. We went to New York City on Saturday to celebrate St. Patty's Day. And I'm definitely feeling a lot better after this weekend as opposed to the last clip that you guys saw in my last vlog where we had some tears flowing, all that kind of shit. Weekend got me kind of reset and I feel a lot better about things. It was just, you know, I had friends and family there when I needed them and that's the kind of shit you need in your life, right? When I had good times with my, with my close friends and other friends and whatever. So I just appreciate them being there. You know, if you're going through something and there's someone there for you, let them know, let them know that you care about them. Just, you know, tell them thank you for being there. And those kind of things go a long way. It might not seem much to you, but believe me, they, they will definitely understand that. And then when they're going through something, you should be there for them. You know, like that's what friendship and that's it. So we're going to get this week started off, right? I got a call with my mentor. This is the first one we're diving on. We're doing a deep dive. This is like the first of our, however many calls over the next three or four months, we're going to go on for about an hour and really break down everything, set my goals, see where I want to be, and hopefully take this bad boy to the next level. So having a call with my virtual real estate client today at four o'clock, going over how the campaign's going and implementing next steps and stuff. So I got a busy day. I got to get going from the gym um, and dive into my computer. So welcome to week 53. And one more thing when we're kind of on the subject, like I said, it was really good to be out with my friends and stuff and around the people that like, you know, have my back and whatever. Um, and you hear a lot of people always talking about gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. And I never really, I was just like, whatever, yeah, I'm thankful, but never really took the time to think about what that actually meant. And I think it's a super powerful tool in the sense that like something so simple, like you hear a lot of successful people talk about when they wake up, they write down five things that they're grateful for. And that really helps. Like if you're feeling in a shitty mood, it's so easy to get caught up in things that are working against you, right? Because those consume your feelings most of the times and your emotions. And whether it's anxiety or whether it is a little bit of heartache or whether it's whatever it might be that you're dealing with, right? Just like take a step back, think about those feelings, you know, let them kind of sink in. Like own your feelings, right? Own your feelings. It sucks. It happens. But whether it's just saying it in your head or even writing it down, think about the things you're grateful for. When you're going through some shitty things, there, are, there will be little peaks and valleys in there where you feel good and you stop thinking about the shitty things and you think about things that are going well for you or, or people that you care about and people that have your back. Just wake up three to five things, right? Be like, I'm really grateful that I live in like a, a good area, a good town. My mom shelters me, right? Like I have the opportunity to go after my dreams because of other people working hard for me. I'm grateful for having friends that have my back and that are true, right? And they don't judge and, and vice versa. I'm grateful that I could be there for people, right? And you just start like compiling these things that you're grateful for that not everybody has, right? You're gonna have things that are going well for you in life that other people don't have. And that's their like lack of joy, right? That's where their pain is kind of coming from. While you don't have that kind of pain, like you have some good things that are going for you. And that's something you should be grateful for. Like even taking five minutes out of the, the, the beginning of your day and saying, I'm really thankful for my best friend. I'm thankful for my girlfriend. I'm thankful for my mom. And really think about it and be like, why am I thankful for them? And like, when you start thinking about it really deep, you know, you'll feel better about it. And you'll be like, you know, I do have good things going for me. And that's definitely something that could help a lot of you guys that are going through some shit. So, so the first calls in the books, it's seven o'clock. Got to hop on a call with Dan, my new mentor. This is going to be our first deep dive into the program, I guess. It's my mentorship, if you want to call it. I'm waiting for him to get on. We're getting on a video call for about an hour, hour and a half. Just discuss everything. Client call went well. Have another one tomorrow morning with Fantasy Jocks company I've been working with for the last year or so, my first ever paying client, and I'm going to, I'll break it down for you after we actually get off the call, but I'm going to try to lock up a big, big, big deal with them for marketing, for uh, as an influencer, and a few other things, but it's going to be a detailed call. I have a lot of things lined out that I want to talk to them about, and if things go well, it could be a really, really, really big thing for me. You know,
you know how that should go. Switch a few things up in my room. I moved the desk. It was coming out like this and then here. So I flipped it around, put it in the corner. Makes the room a lot more spacious and organized. It's kind of fucking crazy before. I moved my favorite picture right there. It's a big open space. And then I got like a giant calendar from Amazon to help me kind of see what plans I got going on. And, and cause this summer is going to be a busy one. Just uh, have that right top of mind to help keep me organized and stuff. Um, it's 12.30, Tuesday, I just got home from the gym. And I have this call I was talking about yesterday. Uh, I'm about to hop on that at one o'clock. This call is a big one. I'm going to make an offer. I'll tell you more about the details depending on how it goes. Basically a monthly package and it's a unique kind of position I'm in. It's a package that I'm, I'm asking for a lot of money. It's gonna be a big investment from the company to me, at, like into me as a person, as well as my technical skills. So it's kind of nerve wracking because you know, I've never asked anyone for this kind of money before um, from a client. And you know, like I always get nervous sending my pricing proposals over and this type of money that I'm asking for is much bigger than any Anything I've done before and I'm always nervous sending the smaller amount so I can you know it, it's it's kind of getting to me a little bit the calls in a half hour and I'm, I'm getting nervous but I, I just know if I sell myself right and I kind of you know show them exactly what value they're gonna get out of me then it should work out and I wouldn't I wouldn't ask I'm not just gonna raise my prices for the sake of raising my prices but I'm doing it because I think both of us together their company and myself like will get a crazy ton amount of value on both sides of this like I wouldn't ask for this type of money unless I really really believe that I could return like tenfold on what they're investing into me so as long as I you know keep my keep level-headed and really explain why I think that's the case I, I don't think I should have a problem on this I'm getting worked up about it and I was telling Steve yesterday I was like yeah I'm gonna try to close on this big deal tomorrow he's like you're definitely like kind of freaking out and I bet you got this whole like thing planned out and all this stuff you're gonna tell him and then he's just gonna answer back and be like dot 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 okay sure sounds good and I was like honestly that's probably what's gonna happen because Sometimes when it's a big thing like this, I find myself almost over preparing for it, which is not a bad thing. I'd rather over prepare than under prepare for sure, especially when it comes to something like a big investment or um, you know something to do with your career. Obviously you wanna be ready, but maybe that speaks to me like, I don't know, like I just, uh, the point of this is I just want to make sure that he sees the value in what I bring to the table and maybe like it's more obvious than I think but I just want to hammer that point across to, to them. So I'm looking forward to this and uh, my next clip I'll either be very excited or I mean one way or another we're going to be working again together soon but I, I just don't know on what level or what basis so I will obviously keep y'all updated. This is the new setup I'm, I'm going with for my fantasy football videos. I'm actually about to start recording one right now but I figured I'd touch in with you guys. Oh yeah, it's the ring. It's fancy football ring. I don't know why I'm wearing it. I like this setup. You got that thing in the back. You got Chance in the back. The one thing I do fucking hate about it is the fact that I actually got to make my bed so it doesn't look like I'm a slob. But I like the setup overall. It's pretty cool for videos. All right, so check it. I just got back from court. Obviously, we beat the case. No, I'm just kidding. I'm out on bail right now. I got a speeding ticket like a month ago. There's a four point speeding ticket on my license. Talk to the prosecutor. It's gonna knock it down to either a two point speeding ticket or what they call an unsafe. I don't know, it's some kind of moving violation. No no points on your license, but it is recorded and it is a five hundred dollar fine. I'm like I don't I don't understand. Like why do I need to pay five hundred dollars for an illegal turn or something? Those are my options. I'm gonna have to go back to court because she the prosecutor is really nice. She was like, why don't why don't you call your insurance company, figure out what would be, you know, obviously the points on your license is gonna cost you more through insurance, but she said to talk to the agent and see if the other option you know, what, what would it end up, would it end up costing $500 in total for you to have two points for a year? I don't know, so I gotta call the agent. Other good news, we closed the deal. We landed the deal that I was talking about in the last clip, sent over the contract. Real good conversation, very productive. The contract is worth between twenty dollars and $25,000 over like a 10 month period. By far the biggest one I've agreed to up to this point, which is awesome, obviously gets me, it's kind of like a surreal feeling that I went off on my own, was able to produce enough and do enough things that someone would want to work with me for that amount of money. So I'm just kind of like taking it in, you know? It's really uh, it's crazy, you know? And it's just the beginning. We're just getting started. Kind of a double-edged sword right now because when you work for yourself like this, obviously you have to pay taxes, but what they do is you're supposed to pay quarterly. So you pay once every quarter, and that's based off projections of revenue that you would have for the following year. So I gotta pay 2017 taxes, along with I gotta project what my income 
minus my expenses are going to be for 2018 and then pay taxes on the first quarter of that. That's kind of shitty, but this money should hold me over for uh, a little bit. This is what it's all about. I get these payments and, and I use them to supplement my life. Now this gives me more opportunity to travel, right? I had a few possible vacations in the near future that I probably wasn't going to take that now I might. Down to Carolina in uh, Charlotte. Also maybe, oh wait, maybe there's a both in Charlotte. One's in Charleston, one's Charlotte. So Charleston, Charlotte, going to LA in May, Florida in July. Also Israel in July. Wow, I actually am traveling a lot in the semi near future. I'm going to Israel for like 10 days for birthright. I don't know if any of you, I never talk about religion. I'm not religious. My mom was all Catholic. I mean, my mom was fully Jewish, like her parents were Jewish. My dad was fully Catholic. <laughs> um, I was 50-50. Obviously, religion is a choice. I chose to make confirmation and become Catholic because I wanted to play basketball on the church team. Boys throwing up like 16 a game, 16 and five. They needed me, I knew it. So I did that, that's a true story. Baptize, communion, confirmation in like a 10 minute period right before a game in like seventh grade. That's facts, it's true. You can ask any of my friends that fucked around and threw up a triple double like that day too. God, God was with me. So anyways, but birthright, like if you're unaware of birthright is they let you basically anyone from America take a trip to Israel completely paid for, completely free. It's like a $3,000 trip. I, I don't know like who funds this to be honest with you. I don't know if it's like rich Jewish people in the country that just want you to go see it, but they'll basically let anyone go through. My sister did it. Uh, two summers ago, you have to do it before you before you're 26 or uh, 26 or younger. So I'm getting there. So I got to do it soon. I didn't lie to them. It wasn't like I'm fully Jewish. I go to temple and shit like that. And I wear a yarmulke. You know, I might cop a couple big dogs. Got to eat yarmulkes out there. See if they stitch that shit up custom, custom made. But yeah, I guess I do have a, a lot of traveling left to do. So that's cool. One more thing. I guess I should bring up since, you know, if some of you guys watched my last video again, I touched on this earlier, but, uh, you know, I, I, I end up talking about how me and the girl I was with kind of split up. We're actually going to hang out tonight and not like this, we're not getting back together or anything like that, but it's really just because like, you know, we both were like mature about it and we realized that it was what it was and you know, we want to be friends moving forward because... You know, it's someone that like, when you're in a relationship, you you invest a lot emotionally, right? It's not all like sexual, it doesn't need to be all physical, it doesn't need to be, you know, it's all different parts of you that you invest into it. So it's, like, it's tough to break up with someone and, you know, go from talking to them nonstop like every single day to, you know, just completely cut off. And that's the same thing with like a friendship if something like that happens. And it like, it's not something you want to happen. So if you have power over it, um, it's not like I'm, I, I need to forgive her or she needs to forgive me or anything like that. It's just like why, if, if you know, if, if you're mature about it and you know that you can be friends, because I would like to be friends with her, you should do that. So we're going to hang out tonight and just like see how it goes. So yeah, that's it. It's uh, it's like 6.30 right now, Thursday, Thursday evening. I don't think I have anything planned besides that for the rest of the night. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'm heading into New York City. Tomorrow night. Saturday, my friend, <laughs> my friend's, it's my friend's birthday this week, so he's going to He's getting a big group together to go to Dave and Buster's for Saturday night, which could be fun or could be terrible. I don't know if I want to spend my Saturday night on Dave and Buster's, but that's it. That is all. Yeah, so that's gonna that's gonna wrap up the vlog for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. A very busy week. A lot of calls with clients. I just got on the first call with my mentor. At court, I was sick. Locked up this deal. Like you know, a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff for the future. So keep living like I always say, baby. See you next Saturday.